My name is Sanjay Gupta and I'm a cardiologist in York. Um, today's video is entitled The Third Way. Now today I wanted to tell you a true story. A friend of mine started experiencing chest discomfort in October last year. He'd had a previous cardiac history and had had a previous heart attack, previous stents, and so he recognized almost immediately that the discomfort he was getting was a sign of something sinister brewing in his heart. He immediately decided to make an appointment to see his GP. He tried contacting the GP surgery, but was met with a long answering message which basically said that his call was very important and he was 20th in line to be spoken to. He waited for almost an hour and then eventually got to speak with the receptionist who gave him an appointment to see the GP in a week. My friend felt this was too long, but he understood that the NHS was under a lot of pressure and therefore decided that he would limit his activities because activity would bring on his discomfort. And he eventually did go and see his GP a week later. Unfortunately, during the course of this, because he uh, did not have private medical insurance, he could not even contemplate going private because it was just going to be too prohibitively expensive. The GP he saw was concerned about the chest discomfort and suggested that he be seen in a hospital-based clinic called the Rapid Access Chest Pain Clinic. Now, the Rapid Access Chest Pain Clinics are clinics that have been set up by NHS institutions are following the recognition that the development of chest pain is a very worrying symptom and can be lead to something very dangerous. And therefore, lots of hospitals set up these rapid access chest pain clinics, which aim to see patients with chest pain within a two week period. Unfortunately, however, given the state of the NHS, rapid access chest pain clinic appointments rarely ever get fulfilled within two weeks and can easily range between several weeks and several months. So in any case, my uh, friend chose to wait for the rapid access chest pain clinic appointment, but after a further three weeks, he finally got a message from the hospital to say that he did not meet the guidelines for the rapid access chest pain clinics because the rapid access chest pain clinic was for patients without a pre-existing cardiac history. And therefore, my friend was not a candidate for this clinic. And instead, he should be seen by a consultant cardiologist in a new patient, outpatient appointment. Now, the problem with those is that the waiting time for those are much, much longer. So um, whilst, you know, the rapid access chest pain clinic has this kind of time thing where they at least endeavor to try and see you in a good, timely manner, new patient consultant clinics can certainly be several months uh, before, they're, before they come through. So, uh, uh, unfortunately, he went back to his GP as symptoms con were continuing. The GP uptitrated some of his medications, wrote back to the hospital and said, look, you know, he's getting worse. Can you please see him ASAP? Uh, my friend was so concerned, he went to A&E where he waited several hours, had an ECG and blood tests, and was told he had not had a heart attack and therefore there was no need for admission and he should just go home and wait for his cardiology clinic appointment. Uh, so after all that, he went back and he had really little option but to wait every day uh, and look at his post, hoping that the date of his appointment would come through. Eventually, the uh, appointment did come through at the end of last year. Um, this was, uh, my friend was relieved when he saw this. He went to make himself a cup of coffee and suddenly started feeling dizzy. And next thing he'd collapsed and suffered a fatal cardiac arrest due to a massive heart attack. <sighs> when I heard of this, I was deeply saddened. I, I deeply saddened, heartbroken. Not only had I lost someone very close to me, but also I knew that this may have been avoidable. Had his symptoms been addressed earlier, his death could have been prevented. Here he was getting warning symptoms on a daily basis, and he did his best to try and get the health care sector interested in his warning signs, and yet the healthcare system failed him. We tell patients to seek help if they experience chest pain, and yet when patients try and seek help, the help is not forthcoming by any means. 
these days on the NHS, you really have to earn your care. And when this kind of event happens, the system does not really accept any accountability. They say, well, the, the pressures are great. You know, the system is under a lot of pressure. What are we going to do? What are we supposed to do? But the question is, what was the poor patient supposed to do? What was my friend supposed to do? And I've thought hard about that. And I even thought about uh, private medical insurance. And I thought, well, maybe more patients should be thinking about getting private health care because the NHS is failing them. Uh, but private medical insurance is not cheap. Uh, you have to pay monthly premiums, which can be quite expensive. And then the premiums tend to be pushed even higher for those who are most likely to need health care, but least likely to afford the premiums, uh, such as pensioners. The insurers are not really about patient care at all. They tend to be about profit generation. They use clever tricks, such as asking for a big excess, uh, providing only limited cover, raising the premiums the minute the poor patient starts claiming, and refusing to cover any condition which is considered a chronic condition, even if that condition were diagnosed after the patient had taken the policy out. So, Private insurance is not easy and is certainly not affordable. The alternative is to self-fund. But I'm not sure if many of you are aware that private hospitals will actually charge self-funding patients a much higher tariff than they would charge insurance companies. In order to get business from insurance companies, they will charge less for tests and procedures because if they charge higher, then there is a risk that the insurance company will refuse to work with the healthcare provider. And so to make up the loss of profit, the, health, the private healthcare provider will charge the self-funder a significantly higher fees. So basically what this means is that the patient who is prepared to use some of his hard-earned cash to get his health issues addressed will be punished in terms of higher premiums by the private healthcare provider. What is even more infuriating is that the uh, if should the patient decide that because the NHS is not um, able to fulfill his needs in a, in a quick enough time, should that patient decide to pay privately for a test, the NHS then expects them to continue all their treatment privately and they would have to be discharged from the private sector and be re-referred by their GP to the NHS as a new patient for the NHS to become interested again. So you can see this is crazy. You know, uh, you are punished rather than rewarding, rewarded for choosing to pay for your care. To my mind, this is completely ridiculous. Surely if someone is willing to pay for their tests, if the public health system is flagging, then that can only be a good thing because it allows a slot for that test to become a free for someone else, someone who may not be able to afford to pay. And this experience with my friend made me realize that the only truth in the word healthcare industry is the word industry. It is not about health or care. It is an industry. The public health system is arrogant, it is sluggish, and it views the patient purely as a data set. The private sector is a little bit faster, but sees the patient as a cash cow. In the public health system, you really have to earn your care. In the private system, you really have to pay for care. So what is the poor patient to do? The more I thought about it, the more upset it made me. And it became very apparent to me that there's a desperate need for a third way, where patients can get the care that they need at a price that is not designed to take advantage of them. As far as I see it, a patient needs three things. Firstly, you want early and easy access to the most qualified healthcare professional for the complaint that you have. Secondly, you want the tests to be done in a timely manner. And thirdly, you want the cost of your care to be affordable and not overinflated. And I wanted to explore this further. Uh, I wanted, I, I was so desperate after what had happened to try and make a change to the status quo. But how is it possible to fight these very powerful market forces? How do I, as a lone voice, 
actively try and make a beneficial difference to my community? How do I work on behalf of my community for their help, for their safety? And it struck me that there may be another option. And this is the idea of making affordable, self-funded heart health packages available to patients. So what I conceptualized was this idea that much like someone goes to a supermarket and buys a product, it may be possible to go and just buy a heart health package, which would include a consultation with a professional of your choice, the best tests for your complaint, and a follow-up consultation to discuss the results, all packaged at an affordable price. While this seemed like a good solution, initially it became apparent that it would be very difficult to persuade any private healthcare provider to be willing to reduce their charges to make something like this affordable. Why would anyone be willing to take a loss in profits to make my dream a reality? And the more I thought about this, the more I racked my brains, I realized that I had a secret weapon that I could use as a bargaining tool. And that is my social media platform and all of you wonderful people who have inspired me to become a better human. So I decided to approach a private healthcare institution and explain my vision to them and also how and why this would be such a wonderful thing to do for our community. I explained to them that there may be a way I could, through my platform, make lots of people aware of this initiative. And I can, I, I can't hide my happiness as I tell you that they bought into this vision and they've agreed to help me make this a reality. So today on the third anniversary of my beloved father's passing and also as a tribute to my friend, the friend I lost a few months ago, I'm delighted to announce that we will be launching a chest pain package. This will include a consultation with me a cardiac CT scan, which is perhaps the best non-invasive way of looking at the state of the health of the heart arteries, and a follow-up consultation with me to discuss the results and plan any further management. The private healthcare provider have assured me that they will be able to get the test done within a seven to ten day period. So what this means is that the journey for a patient from first making contact with us and getting the results of the tests, the, the best test, could be as short as seven days. Now the big problem was the cost. How does, how does one make this cost affordable? So usually a package like this would cost £2,000 because the CT scan itself um, is priced at about £1,600. And the consultations are about £400, so the uh, initial consultation and the follow-up consultation. But I've thankfully been able to agree a total price for the whole package of 1199 So that's a substantially reduced and perhaps more affordable price for some people. You know, I, I don't by any means, I'm not saying that 1199 is not expensive. It is. It's incredibly expensive. But the point was about trying to create a third option, trying to create a viable third alternative which may be more affordable. And so <clears throat> the wonderful news also is that with this, you do not need a GP referral. You can contact me directly and I will facilitate this for you. Another great bit of news is that this is potentially a scalable model. So if the demand is high, it may be possible to enlist the help of more cardiologists to help keep the waiting times to a minimum. If this works out, it could be something amazing for the community. And on a personal note, it would mean something really important to me uh, because it would mean that I have in some way helped create a legacy in the name of my father and my friend. I would really love to hear your thoughts and I would be so, so grateful for your support in making this a reality. The healthcare provider have given me a three month period to make this work. And if I can't make it work by then, they may withdraw this offer. So your support in letting everyone who may benefit from this would be so, so appreciated. If anyone wants to take up on this offer, please email us at yourcardiology at gmail.com with the words grab heart package, G-R-A-B heart package in the heading, and we will get back in touch ASAP. Finally, as it is the third death anniversary of my beloved father, 
I would like to donate another five free 30 minute consultations to anyone who may benefit. Please send us an email at yourcardiology at gmail.com and we can hopefully make it happen. Thank you so much.